Some say that content creation is not a real job. And you know what? They're right. It's not. The truth is content creation in 2021 is like 15 different jobs meshed into this one overwhelming, confusing, ever-changing mess. As a professional creator, you have to wear a lot of different hats. On top of whatever your niche may be, you also have to become a little bit of a writer who can captivate the audience with the basic story you are telling. You're also your own director and your own film crew, because once there is a story, you will need to get the technical package right. You're also the star of the show, headlining the content, the tip of the iceberg, which people will actually see in the end. And you are of course the social media manager, who will make sure that the content will get in front of as big of an audience as possible. These are not all, but a few key elements of content creation, the key personas you need to come together, oftentimes in one single day, to create decent enough content. So I thought today, let's talk about this creative process. Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. You are watching DMB's channel, my name is Laszlo and I do graphic design and illustration. In this video I'm going to show you the behind the scenes of how I have created a full-on graphic design course on my own, which you can find on Creative Fabrica. Now Creative Fabrica is one of those design resource websites, just like Skillshare or Envato Market, where you could go to find all sorts of graphic design and illustration goodies for free and for not free as well. Now this video is not sponsored in any way, shape or form, but the series of classes I have created for these guys, I got paid for. Which I guess makes me a professional content creator now? Weird. Anyway, so that happened and you can now find them where you can find them, I'll leave a link down somewhere. So while I can't show you the actual classes I have created here on this channel, I thought still at least I can tell you all about how to create good video content. Step by step, by letting you peek behind the scenes, and introducing you to my little, well, one-man crew, okay? Let's do it. Chapter 1. The Writer I am a firm believer that valuable pieces of content are being born on the writing table. Once you have an idea, it is time to describe it. For me, this is where it all begins. This is step 1. Well, after an idea, that is. In a very Ernest Hemingway-esque manner, I like to start my day with a little bit of writing, whenever I can. When the world is still very peaceful and quiet in the early mornings, I can hear my thoughts a bit louder than usual. That's a good line. My online class is all about how to come up with creative logo ideas, so the script for it needs to be jam-packed with little pieces of design theory wisdom, but in a very easily digestible way so we don't scare off young creatives. This is going to be a beginner's class after all. As a designer, I gotta admit, I never really thought that I'm going to have to become a little bit of a writer. But to be honest with you, for me it was a pleasant surprise, because I find myself really really enjoying the writing process. No matter your platform and medium, whether you are putting a script together for a YouTube video, deciding on bullet points for a podcast, or crafting headlines for an Instagram carousel, sharpening your writing skills will get you better results. Your tone of voice needs to be in sync with the language and the vocabulary of the target audience. Hence, your writing skills is something that you should be constantly bettering and bettering and bettering as you go. For this class, as I said, I'm going to need to include some very juicy, little secret tips of graphic design and illustration, but at the same time a lot of the content is going to be recorded real time. Just me sketching and designing and crafting things which I can't really plan out word for word, otherwise it would feel very, you know, fake. But when I'm putting a script together, I still need to mark all these little bits and blind spots, just so I have something clear and concise, which I like to call the skeleton of the content, because as I said, this is the basic pillar of the whole thing, for me. Chapter 2. The Director Once we have some sort of an action plan, we can move on to planning out how the content will come together in its basic, technical package. I don't want to bore you with the overwhelming details of videography or color theory. There are much more qualified people here on YouTube who could do that for you, but I can tell you this. When I record myself, I want to get at least these three basic things right. I need clear audio, I need good lighting, and I need an attractive main shot. I think these are the main pillars that make media content stand out. For good audio, just like we did, you're going to need to invest in some sort of an external microphone. What we like to use is this trustworthy little USB mic by Marantz, which after some good software and hardware soundproofing and editing, and by hardware based soundproofing I mean pillows and towers on the floor, gives us the results we are happy with. 
The main source of lighting is being provided by this photography softbox, just to make me, the main subject, pop a little bit. You could rely on natural light by sitting nearby a window, which does work to some extent, I have done that in the past, but in those situations you are very much up to the mercy of the elements of nature. A big cloud can suddenly change the whole color of your recording, as time goes on the sun will change its position as well, which obviously will leave a mark on your lighting situation as well, that kind of thing. Oh, and in the background we have this little desk lamp, which is there for no other reason than to create another level of visual interest. And that is obviously part of the illusion to create a more exciting and busier looking main shot, which is for the most part either me or Jacqueline sitting in our office. For my class I'm also going to include some overhead shots where people can only see my sketchbook and my drawing hand, but generally speaking even for those I'm going to apply the same three principles when it comes to recording those shots as well. Sound, light, image, got it? Now the first time you're going to set up everything for you it might take a while. And it will also take some experimentation to find the best filming spot in your environment. But you know, the more you do it, the quicker you will be at it. Because I have been doing this kind of stuff for a while now, it only takes me like 10, maybe 15 minutes to get everything ready. After which I am ready to record. Chapter 3. The Actor. Now all of this we have talked about so far is prep work. So what's gonna bring this whole thing together is the delivery by your camera ready personality. In the same vein how movies are the collaborations of hundreds of people at a time, the performance of the main actor slash actress headlining the production can make or break the whole thing. This sounds scary as hell. And this I believe is the main barrier that stops people wanting to create content in the first place. Because looking eye to eye with a camera, acting like as if it was a person, talking to it the same way you would talk to a friend, is not a normal thing. It does not come naturally to most of us, because well if you think about it, it is a very surreal situation and there is nothing normal about it really. Again my advice on this would be just to do the legwork, as the more you wander in front of the camera, the more natural you will look. The first couple tries will be awful, and if you want proof of that, all you really have to do is look at some of my earliest videos. I mean, I'm still very much of a work in progress. And don't get me wrong, you don't need to be a Shakespearean level performer in order to succeed on social media. The ability to look and feel natural, the ability to sound like yourself in real life is what's going to attract an audience. I mean I have started making videos about a year and a half ago. I sucked at it in the beginning. And now one and a half years later someone is paying me to do this. So I believe talking to a camera is a skill that anyone can learn really. Yeah? Chapter 4. The Social Media Manager. Ok, now the content is written, it's prepped, it's recorded, so the next step would be to actually sit down and put it all together, to design and edit everything. But I'm not gonna show you that, for two reasons. One, the content I'm creating here is going to be exclusive to Creative Fabrica's platform, and two, do you really wanna watch me edit video hours and hours and then? I promise you it's not interesting at all. So let's take an imaginary jump, let's say it's all done. What's the next step then? Next you utilize social media and show off the work you have created. Now this could be in the form of an Instagram carousel, a tweet or I don't know, maybe a YouTube video? The point is to make some noise about you somewhere where people will hear it. And don't get me wrong, I'm fully aware that at this point in time we're all kind of questioning what role social media should be playing in our creative process. I mean oftentimes I do feel like I actually hate social media and the way it currently works. And I'm fully aware how ironic that makes me sound, saying that out loud in the form of this YouTube video. But I do very much dislike how certain social media platforms have managed to turn the world of art and design into a competition, as if we were like gladiators in the Colosseum in ancient Roman times, always trying to outsmart, outdo and survive all the other creators, who are very much like us, just trying to adapt and survive in this ever-changing rented land, while being paid with basically nothing but these likes, hearts, comments and other forms of imaginary payments you can't actually use in the real world. <sighs> Being super cynical again. All of that being said, I do still think that social media is a game that you kinda have to play. You do need to pay attention to what these platforms are doing and where are they going next. Because while they take work, serious work to master them and use them to your advantage, without them you and your content, well, you are a little bit of a ghost. It's almost like you exist but no one has seen it so 
So I do take time out and force myself to learn about keywords and SEO and hashtags and posting at the right thing at the right time. Because as a digital content creator, which I believe pretty much every designer and artist kind of have to be these days, you have to use all the tools from the toolbox, not just your favorite tools in order to succeed. You know what I'm saying? So once I was done with my classes, I did put together a really nice carousel post for our Instagram page to generate some online traffic. And of course, by now, you know, I made this video as well, so people would, you know, talk about the classes I have created. By the way, they are all about beginner level graphic design advice and tips in much more detail than I ever go into in any of these 10-15 minute long videos on our channel. So if you're into that kind of stuff, feel free to check it out. I'll leave a link down there somewhere. Yeah? And while I'm still begging for your attention, please consider joining our creative crew. As you might know, I'm all about graphic design and illustration, and Jacqueline, my partner's content, is focusing on interior design, decor and architecture. Insights, tutorials, tips, tricks and all things in between. Leave a like to help us reach even more people with this channel and I hope to see you this time next week with something else, okay? See ya!